Warning, the following episode has been rated rant. It is a deviation from normal content normally presented on this channel. The following discussion features the topic of abortion, and it is presented by a professional pirate of liberty, and may be under supervision of an adult. Accordingly, the Liberty Pirate and its producers must insist that no one attempt free thought without first contacting the disinformation board. Viewer discretion is advised. What in the world is going on? I don't know about you, but I feel like we're on the precipice of falling into either the blue version of totalitarianism with their Ministry of Truth in 1984 vibes or the Red Team's Handmade Tale authoritarian version. And honestly, Airstrip 1 and Gilead have a pretty bad rap and no one wants to live there. So let's not get to that point. I've spoken in multiple videos about abortion. But it looks like I get to beat this dead horse again. And before I lose you, let's talk about the leak of Justice Alito's draft on the overturning of Roe v. Wade and how the right is furious. First of all, everything the government does to include the high court should be as transparent as possible. Why on earth, especially here in America, would anyone be content for our elected or appointed officials to be conducting business in secrecy or behind closed doors? Unless it's a matter of national security, we shouldn't be content with that type of business. And though Chief Justice Roberts can order an investigation into why certain protocols weren't followed correctly, the reaction by a national party being upset that pertinent information that affects millions of Americans was uncovered should not be the default emotional response. And that reaction is telling on how Republicans plan on rolling out their prerogative on abortion. We saw it with Oklahoma's midnight passing of their abortion ban, and they're okay with surprising everyone last minute to avoid having an actual debate and conversation about it. And even the continued reassurance by Justices Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barrett that Roe was accepted precedent at their confirmation hearings was complete subterfuge. Because let's face it, when it comes to pro-life, and I was once very pro-life, there is a sense of moral superiority. And yes, I held that belief in anyone who can even empathize with the concept of abortion is automatically considered inferior and immoral. Even though a majority of Americans prefer to leave Roe in place, even Republicans polled are split with 49% favoring to uphold the ruling. That's why entrenched Republican politicians don't want to debate because any conflicting perspective is automatically devalued in a bid to portray righteousness. And like I've said, I respect all perspectives on abortion because it's personal, but they should not be enforced on those with differing assessments and definitely not be viewed as inferior. Let's bring out the vegans, especially the pro pita throw paint on your mink's coat types. Why? Well, Vegans put a much greater emphasis on the value of all animal life. They take it a step further from human life and feel a greater purpose in protecting the sanctity of life of those who cannot defend themselves. Sound familiar? Well, if you're already distinguishing the difference between human life and other life, congratulations. You're able to understand how pro-choicers quantify their decisions. With us being animals, albeit sentient, vegans have a legitimate argument that their value on life, which is more encompassing to most people's perspective, is morally exceptional. So should their viewpoint be enforced on all because of that? Do we stop eating steak? Are vegans more righteous and garner superior morality because they do value life at a higher degree? Of course not. We all, at some level, Choose quality of life over the sanctity of life. And that is okay. We don't need to develop mental gymnastics to validate our reasoning on why we rank and file levels of life. We all do it. 
pro-lifers do it. Stop pretending. And if those of you that avoid cognitive dissonance on the logic that life is life regardless and still insist that a human life is somehow different than any other animal life, why? There is nothing in nature that delegates humans as superior to any other animal. It is our species alone who determines that designation. It is self-preservation. If any other species had self-awareness, they'd surely presume their species were more important than all others, to include humans. So, by what means do humans assume superiority in other species? Biologically speaking, all animal life share the same qualities, require the same components for sustainment, and have similar life cycles. Again, it is us who determine the pecking order based on what? Genetic coding? Human traits? But then again, DNA in nature has no moral aptitude in deciphering humans as different or superior. And an argument can be had that many animals share more human traits than that of a non-viable fetus. Let's not forget, Harambe had more in common with being human than a fetus does, and we all know how we treated him. So the question begs, where does the moral implications derive from? Vegans value life on a broader perspective, and one could surmise that their moral compass far exceeds others with their wide value of life. Yet, the logic that leads them to their convictions shouldn't be enforced on all. And most would agree with that. So extend that to pro-lifers. If you can use the logic to devalue other life compared to humans, even though nature itself has no deviation on that, how does that view differ from vegans or a pro-choicer? The simple answer is that most, not all, but most, in defense of the pro-life narrative are rooted in divine revelation. And if that is the case, as we know in our secular nation, Religious influence shall not be favored nor mandated. So void of religious interpretation and a recognition that the totality of life can be valued differently, then you extend that same liberty to pro-choicers. Now, the complicated obstacle is to discern when a fetus gains autonomy. Most could argue that cognition and sentience are uniquely human traits. And it's the potential of a fetus to develop these traits that pro-lifers tend to latch onto. It's a projection of emotional attachment and abstract thought. The Roe decision was a widely accepted compromise at viability. Before the third trimester, the fetus is fully dependent on the mother. And by any other example of a foreign biological entity, no other person would have issue with someone removing something on their body or body modification or cosmetic surgery. So Roe protects a woman's private medical decisions. And almost all abortions occur before third trimester. The exceptions are usually extreme circumstances. Roe also recognizes the potential for a sentient, cognitive, and autonomous being. And it bridges that gray area until the verbiage of the 14th Amendment which states all persons born establishes citizenship, which asserts protection of individual liberty of a newly autonomous person. The argument that rescinding the Roe verdict puts the decision back to the states, well, that's just exchanging one government oversight to another. Don't get me wrong. I do think most federal oversight should be delegated to the states. The only time I agree that federal version step in is in protection of individual liberties guaranteed to us by our constitution because a person's rights far exceed states' rights, no matter the minority opinion. So if a state overwhelmingly supports banning abortion, that authority is repressing the individual rights of the minority belief within that state. And that assertion to mob rule is antithetical to conservative values, or it's supposed to be. Abortion should never be the first answer to birth control, and statistics show it isn't. More than half 
of all abortions, some form of contraceptive was used. The increased availability of birth control has led to a continued decrease in abortion over the past decade. There is a continued assault by the right to unabashedly portray pro-choicers as immoral, deviant, and inferior, all the while praising their own arrogance of righteousness and moral superiority. Abortion is not a partisan issue. It is a personal one, and it has been manipulated into a wedge issue and used as a threat to demonize both sides of the aisle. But government, at any level, should not be used to interfere with individual liberty. It should always be my body, my choice. Just like it was with mask mandates and vaccinations, no government should force their interpretation of what they think is best for us. Only we know what is best for us. Only we should have a say in our own medical decisions. Not the government, nor anyone else, no matter their self-appealing honorable convictions. And that is egregious. Stay the f*** out of our bodies. Stay the f*** out of our bedrooms and get the f*** out of here with your goddamn virtue signaling.